Welcome to Bold Voices, a production of the Community Foundation of Broward, where we explore Broward's biggest issues, get to know some of the people and organizations creating a bold impact in our community, and take a deeper dive into the world of local philanthropy with the experts at the Community Foundation of Broward. And now it's time to be bold. Welcome to Bold Voices, a production of the Community Foundation of Broward. I am your host, Ellen Jaffe. Very excited today to welcome a guest who has been with an organization that's one of the key issues that the foundation focuses on, and that is homelessness in Broward County. Fran Esposito, President and CEO of the Broward Partnership for the Homeless, Inc., Can you give us a little bit of the background of how you came to be with the Broward Partnership and why? Okay. My first career was in law office administration back in the late 80s. And I spun out a program for the lawyers to volunteer throughout the community. And in one of those efforts, we volunteered at Camilla's house, never dreaming that I would ultimately run it four or five years later. I was the CEO of Camilla's Health Concern and Camilla's House. And the reason I wound up there is because the homeless problem in Miami-Dade was so dire. We're talking about one particular encampment. It's called the Mud Flats. It was a a two-and-a-half-mile encampment under the bridge at 395 and 95. Yes, I remember. And Governor Childs charged, essentially, the chamber with cleaning it up. And what they did then was launch a public-private partnership with agencies lending executives to the project. And I decided to make application (laughs) without telling my employer (laughs) okay, (laughs) because I had volunteered there at Camilla's house serving food and other activities and attending their events and whatnot and was very interested in the world of how nonprofit actually operated. And so I threw my hat in the ring and uh, the interview was very interesting. It was all social service providers and representatives from United Way and a few lawyers. And they tossed my resume back at me and said, you run law firms. What do you have an interest in social services for? So I explained my volunteer background. And then I said to them, what does your business plan look like for Governor Giles' $3 million? I love it. What does your conflict uh, resolution policies look like for the press and public relations? How are you handling that? How are you going to be recording the data and explaining to the community what the impact of this project is going to be? I was the unanimous choice. I love you. You are no wallflower. <laughs> Let me group. say that. <laughs> so I, uh, I actually went in and explained it to my employers and they were very, very gracious. And they insisted that I stay with the firm for a minimum of a year. And they paid me full salary to go under the bridge. So I was under the bridge at 395 working with the homeless directly, 660 then women. They actually had little villages and towns right. and a mayoral system under there. And then I was able to successfully close that encampment. And that was the platform from which Alva Chapman launched the Chapman Partnership in Miami. That was the pilot project, essentially, that stood for it. A year later, I was invited to come in to Camilla's house as chief operating officer. And I accepted that position. I stayed there, literally in the trenches, learned everything I needed to when I was recruited to Broward to open Broward Partnership for the Homeless. The building was under construction when I joined them in August of 98. And that was actually a result of a $1 million grant from the Community Foundation of Broward to the Broward Partnership for that capital campaign to build that building. And then you came in. Yes. And since then, there's been another 600,000 or so donated for various things. Yes. But I have to ask you, what was it like for you being under the bridge and meeting people personally that most of us only see on the streets at a street corner with a sign? It was an awakening in that it was an extraordinary experience in realizing how human we all are and what puts people that are homeless into this position. And I'll, I'll say that back in the 90s, a lot of what you see on the street corners where we refer to them as the chronically homeless, were those under the bridge. But now that I've been doing this for 35 years, I've witnessed a remarkable transformation in what it means to be homeless. And what is that transformation? Which, first of all, in population alone, historically, it was single men. Like I said, those that you might see on the streets and the street corners. But what I have witnessed over the 35 years is the growth in women, the growth in families, and the growth in the elderly. 
As you know, Broward County is one of the fastest aging counties in the state of Florida. And every now and then when I speak about the homeless assistance centers, two of which we operate, one in Fort Lauderdale and one in Pompano, I sometimes refer to them as an ALF. Assisted living facility, sure. Having met people and understanding that they are human beings. Yes. How do you explain that to other people to encourage them to become involved and not look at them as an oddity or that typical stereotype that, oh, they want to be there. They right. don't want to be you're, helped. You're so right about the typical stereotypes in addition to adding the word lazy. Right? Yes. And really, again, going back to motivation, no one wants to be homeless. Contributing factors, for sure, mental illness and addiction. But in addiction, whether it be alcohol or drugs, substance abuse, often those were the remedies that these people used because they really had a mental health diagnosis that had gone undiagnosed for most of their lives. Right. But how did they wind up on the streets? So common. Domestic abuse, evictions, cost of housing. I mean, we can talk about cost of housing for the rest of the afternoon. Uh, Yeah, certainly it has become more and more of an issue in the last couple of years. COVID put it over the top without question. And with the cost of rents in South Florida, I don't know how people can afford to live here anymore. They can't. And we have lost staff to that. And these staff are moving out of state. So here comes the Community Foundation of Broward. And they have grants, in fact, several of their funds are specifically dedicated to the Broward Partnership for the Homeless. And they've been able to help you hire some staff. Absolutely. Tell me how you benefited. We, We opened the facility. I joined in August of 1998. We had no staff. The building was just going up. So between August of 98 and an opening date that had been picked out of a hat many years earlier, February 1st, 1999, we opened on time with 36 employees. But... Essentially, what we were providing is food, shelter, showers, hygiene supplies, and some level of case management. Over the years, the contributions from the Community Foundation helped us to develop programs like our health care clinic, which is where you are immediately evaluated and assessed by a medical staff who then make referrals for specialty care if they're needed. Community Foundation also stepped up with the development of the workforce program. The workforce program is all about determining what your capabilities are. What was your education? Where have you been employed? And then working with those strengths, creating resumes, doing role interviews, scheduling employer interviews, and then working with those same people to ensure that they keep the job. I love that. I'm such a believer in giving people a hand up. And, you know, we talk about the difference between a hand up and a handout. Correct. And the hand up, you know, teach someone to fish and they'll eat for life. That's right. Very much the same. Now that you've been able to do that, what are the successes that you've seen with the people who've come through the Broward Partnership for the Homeless? 33,000 men, women, and children have come through our doors. And our success rate is extraordinary. We can only track them for a certain amount of time because they want to move on with their lives. They have a new identity. So that's a challenge. But what I can tell you overall, we have the two emergency shelters that I mentioned, one in Fort Lauderdale on the corner of Sunrise and 7th, and the other on Blount Road in Pompano. 230 beds at the Central in Fort Lauderdale, 263 beds in Pompano. So essentially, we're operating 500 emergency shelter beds, and those beds travel with case management, as I've already mentioned, health care, in addition to the workforce development. And I also want to add the fact that we have a three-chair dental suite, and wow. we've never seen anything be more successful for our job development program than dental care, which gives a person back. Their Their dignity, their smile. Yes. Yes. And, you know, they talk about first impressions. When you walk into a room and you have the confidence of a smile, it makes such a difference. difference. And the same thing with having showers and having a wardrobe. We have exactly that. We have a wardrobe room. We have a beauty school that comes in and volunteers their program and actually teaches the women and the men hygiene. And what a more comfortable environment. We actually have a beauty salon set up with the chairs. So it's not as if you're talking to someone about personal hygiene across a desk. Right. 
So in addition to the 500 emergency beds, we have eight off-site programs, and those programs involve rapid rehousing and permanent supportive housing. So the three rapid rehousing programs, those are for individuals and families that basically have some degree of stability. What they don't have is first, last, and security. So we are able to front the first, last, and security and contribute some rental subsidy to rent for them for a specific period of time. And then they are self-sufficient. Do you have to vouch for them when they are finding a place to rent. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And vouching is all about establishing relationships with landlords, which is one of Broward County's biggest challenges. The landlord has to have the trust in who we're placing in their units. Right. And we have been very successful. This is a situation where a case manager travels with that particular individual or a family. And should an issue ever arrive, we are available 24-7 But I have to tell you, in addition to the rapid rehousing programs, I mentioned that we have permanent supportive housing programs. We have six of those. Those house the chronically homeless. Chronically homeless are those individuals that have been homeless on the street for at least a year, have a disabling condition, and the same definition with disabling condition for those that have been homeless four times separate incidences over a three-year period. These are all federal definitions. Right, right. right. But... What I am saying to you for the housing programs that I've just mentioned, the rapid rehousing and the permanent supportive housing, we have a 94% success rate. Congratulations. You really deserve that. I can't imagine 500 plus cases and managing them all. You started with a staff of 36. How many do you need now? We have 115 now with at least 15 to 20 open positions like every other private business and public entity, we're having a problem of hiring. This is what I've been hearing from oh, other people on the podcast. And we've been talking about the Community Foundation of Broward's Nonprofit Center for Excellence, which is training people in the nonprofit area and those who want to be a nonprofit, both how to start their own nonprofit, but also how to work in it, yes. how to write grants for right. organizations that need grant writers, how to do development, how to do outreach and marketing. So it's an incredible resource. Well, and you've just described the reason why I love my job, because I'm doing all of that. I have never been bored a day. One minute you're dealing with federal contracts, the next minute you're dealing with a mother and believe this or not, I know you do. Last Friday night, when I was leaving about 7 o'clock, there was a mother with nine children in our lobby. And when it comes to families in Broward, you talked about earlier what the emerging needs were. The need for family housing is beyond desperate, number one, for all the reasons that we've just mentioned with regard to rents and having the ability to provide first, last, and security. And the other is the size of the units that are required for these families. So if we could put a call out right now to landlords, yes, what would you say to them to get them to call you and say, Fran, I have space for your people? That we're at the best at what we do. We have your interests at heart. There are funds available that would create an incentive for you to call. We will provide first, last, and security, and Broward County has its own landlord program whereby they are providing incentives, bonuses to landlords to sign up with the nonprofits that provide housing. And really, they're getting stable Correct. tenants. They're because getting people who is, are backed. They are, they are absolutely backed with case management, and their rent will always be paid on time. How do they reach you or whoever is in charge of that department <laughs> no. at the Broward Partnership for the Homeless? Please to go to the website, bphi.org. Okay. Or they can call me directly at Fran Esposito, 954-779-1693 is my direct dial. If someone is interested in supporting you through the Community Foundation of Broward, there are a couple of funds that are specifically dedicated to the work that you do. What would you say to them that might prompt them to actually pick up the phone or go to the website, go to cfbroward.org and say, I want to make a donation or I want to start my own fund or I'd like to support that fund that's donating? Come see us. Come take the tour. Feel it. See it. So That's you can okay see. with the people who are there. Oh, yes, absolutely. They're okay. very proud to be there. 
This may sound trite, but we've been operating for 25 years, and I've never had a mark, a single mark of graffiti on a wall. That, that's not trite at all. That's a but big thing. You know what it is? It's about the culture. Yeah. If you raise the bar, people will reach. And that's the welcome, and that's the quality and the excellence of the programs that we run. So they're motivated to succeed. Right. How do you get through to people? And we talked about the stereotypes. To really understand, and, and what spoke to me when I went to your website, bphi.org, there was a picture on the homepage of a woman with a sign saying, I'd rather be homeless than be beaten by my husband. Yes, yes. But it's a reality Absolutely. of life. So what do you say to people who are stuck in that old stereotype and say, well, I guess you just said it, come and visit. That's right. Yeah. They can read on the website, but it's not the same thing as coming in person and doing the tour. Right. And my understanding is that so many people are one paycheck away absolutely. from They've homelessness. Been, absolutely. And COVID turned it all upside down right. for so many people who lost their jobs. Right. And how many people right now, I wonder, are living in massive debt, struggling to make whatever payment they can make every day? And what are they sacrificing? Are they giving up meals? Are they giving up electricity? Or their medications. Or their medications. Yes. Exactly. If it's someone with a mental health illness, giving up that medication puts them spiraling further. You are exactly right. It's, you know, it's amazing. The circle, everything is dependent on everything else. The taproot is poverty. Either being born into it or becoming impoverished. There's 1.9 million people in Broward County. Poverty rate is 13%. 13% of 1.9 is about 275,000 people are at or below the poverty level. They're not coming all from New York. So we have 274,000 at or below the poverty level here in Broward County. 1% of that number, we're just rounding here, Mm -hmm. 2,700, that essentially is the number of homeless that are registered in the homeless annual point-in-time count. Anywhere between 22 to 2,700 are homeless in Broward County. In that number, more than half are housed in facilities like Broward Partnership for the Homeless or Salvation Army or Hope South Florida. The others are on the street. What should someone do if they encounter a person who is homeless, whether they're in a park on the street or one of the people who has a magic marker and a piece of cardboard and makes a sign? Do they give them your phone number, tell them to go to a church, a temple? That's a great question because Broward County operates on a centralized intake system. No one can walk up to any of our facilities and be intaked. It's all referral-based. So the task force to end homelessness is that nonprofit agency that has outposts throughout the county pickup points. So an individual should be referred to their website. There is also a homeless helpline. That's 954-563-HELP. That should be the first point of instruction. There are trained therapists there Then will do the interview and the assessment and refer the individual or the family to the right source. But moving back to the task force and the pickup points, At that time, those individuals and families are evaluated, and the task force can then make referrals to the open beds in the community. Do you recommend that someone actually speak to someone who is homeless or seeking assistance who is a stranger and say, I'd like to help you, can I call the task force, or should they just call and let them know where the person is? They could do both. They could do both. And to call on behalf of someone, that would be wonderful. The task force knows every person, essentially, that's on the street. They do the seven days a week, obviously, 365. So they're very familiar with the encampments or where the gathering points are. The work you're doing is incredibly challenging and never ending. Never ending. But when you ask what the end for homeless is, one of the solutions that has been moved in the last 20 years is housing. Housing ends homelessness. And although we've not gotten to it, and maybe you're going to ask me, we have completed our first low-income housing residential complex, seven on seven. Yes, tell me about it. Oh, we're so excited, (laughs) we're so excited. The community is very, very supportive, have been from day one, and they'll have so much to celebrate at our grand opening. We're looking to open it in September. We are already taking tenants. 
It was awarded as a 9% tax credit project. We broke ground in August of 2021, and it is a 72-unit facility. We have seven efficiencies, 822, and 57 one ones. Now, does someone have to be referred through this yes. system to get in? Yes, okay. but it's a different type of referral this time because the building is operated by a licensed organization that is light or permitted to actually operate affordable housing projects under the Fair Housing Act. So that's a science in and of itself. So the name of the management company is Royal American Management. To be considered for tenancy, you would go to the website 7 on 7th at royalamericanmanagement.com. All but right. I can tell you those units went fast, so I don't know that there's any I'm availability. Sure. Yeah. Well, maybe someone will be inspired to start their own fund here at the Community <laughs> Foundation of Broward. That would be Broward. wonderful. Absolutely. And further to your thought, yes, we've completed this building, but we have another opportunity in Pompano. At the Pompano site, 1700 Blount Road, there is a three-acre site behind the facility that the county has deeded to us, and we are making application to apply for funds to build up to 138 units on that site. You know, every little bit. I, every I say little this bit. with dollars, every dollar adds up, every unit is Absolutely. another family that's housed. Well, going back to 7 on 7th, that used to be a 72-space parking lot. Oh. Now it is 72 homes. That's just wonderful. I mean, when you talk about bold, yeah. that is making bold change in Broward yes. County. Yes. And it is irreversible. That's right. And that's one of the things about Community Foundation of Broward that they talk about is that the funds are forever. It's in perpetuity. And what you're doing is forever in perpetuity. So thank you for... And forever changing lives. Changing lives. Yes. Helping people to regain their dignity and their independence. Yes. And I have no doubt there are thousands who are grateful. They may not know it's you, Fran Esposito, who is doing it. And I know you're going to credit your staff of 136 and the 20 who are still to be hired. Contact That's the truth, in addition to a board of directors who really understand governance, compassion, and have passion for the cause. It's so important. And your passion is clear. And I thank you. I'm really moved by what you do. Come for a tour. I will. And I have a ton of stuff I can donate. What kind of things do you need? Clothes, okay. hygiene supplies, food. That's the types of opportunities we can offer. First of all, COVID set everyone back with regard to the lack of volunteers for all the obvious reasons. So we need volunteers to come back to teach, to do haircuts, to throw birthday parties, and to help us with other opportunities and activities for the residents. And they can do donation drives at their place of business or with their own families. Or things like the hygiene supplies, the underwear, food. Yeah, we all have extra, don't we? Yes. Other than those who have nothing, the rest of us, for the most part, have more than we need. So bphi.org, if you want to see more about the Broward Partnership for the Homeless and find where you can fit in, whether as a donor of money, a donor of items, or a volunteer. Correct. Yes. And I'm sure that you need that as well. And you may want to participate in one of our events. We have three signature events each year. Our annual Salute to Leadership, that's our annual gala, where we honor community leaders. We're looking at our Chef's event that's coming up September 30th. And that's a real fun event. You actually pull a number out of an ice bucket, and that number is correlated to a limousine that's outside of where we're hosting the cocktail party. You have no idea where you're going to dinner. Have fun. It is totally <laughs> fun. It's like a mystery <laughs> dinner night, and that's it's great. very successful. And then our Breakfast of Champions in December, and that's essentially community-based leadership breakfast. And again, all of that is on the website, bphi.org. Yes. And if you are moved by this, please also visit the Community Foundation of Broward, whether you want to look at the Nonprofit Center for Excellence and get the skills and the education so that you can apply for one of those 20 jobs that are available, or you'd like to start your own fund or make a donation to a fund that is already dedicated, and there are several, to the Broward Partnership for the Homeless. Fran Esposito, President and CEO, thank you for visiting us on Bold Voices.
Thank you, Ellen. As always, we like to finish with Kirk's Corner, where we bring in Kirk Engelhart, Vice President of Marketing for the Community Foundation of Broward. And Kirk, you have so much insight into the foundation and its workings, particularly on the issue we've been discussing with Fran Esposito about homelessness in Broward County. What is the foundation's take on this? It's so exciting when you see something like this happen, but so many people in our community, really, they've got the resources and they've got the desire, but they just don't know how to make it happen, how to put it together in a way that has a real impact. And that's what the Community Foundation is here for. Well, I'm sure that anyone who drives by 7 on 7th, once they're open in September, will have tangible results to see the kind of changes that the Community Foundation of Broward has been able to support in Broward County with this building, with this housing. And the Broward Partnership is just doing remarkable work in the community. One thing that we found is that when we bring people out to see these nonprofits in action, to see the Broward Partnership, to see some of these organizations and actually speak to the people who are being helped, it's like a light bulb goes on and they just become passionate when they realize, wow, this is really happening and this is the impact that philanthropic dollars can have in the lives of people. That's what makes this job so much fun and so rewarding every single day. Yeah. And the energy in the building is palpable. So I invite people to make that call or visit the website as a starter at cfbroward.org. You can't go wrong. Kirk Engelhart, Vice President of Marketing for the Community Foundation of Broward. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you for listening to Bold Voices. We hope you've enjoyed this episode and hope you'll be inspired to join us in creating a better Broward for all. If you'd like more information, visit us online at cfbroward.org. And remember to always be bold.